We're gonna try to work with the technology today and that gives me a lot of fear. So I try to implement it as much as I can, if I can do it, but let's see if it's working. Yes, it is, cool. Okay, so let me just pull up my notes. I'm excited to be here uh, to deliver this lesson just because um, it's been one that you know I've been thinking about for a little bit. Uh, it's been on my mind, and I just you know wanted to to elaborate a little bit on something that I've been been meditating on and thinking on, and so uh, that's what I use what I use to to kind of start this lesson. And so uh, to preface this lesson, I want to turn to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter two is where I'm going to start. Ephesians chapter two verse eight, and it says. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God. And so this is where, when I read this, it immediately struck a lot of thoughts into my head because I know what is going on in the world. I know what, um, I know what some people believe. I know that there's a lot of people in this world, and sometimes even within the body, that people believe that faith in God means that all we have to do is believe in the fact of just act, the action of belief, and that's all we have to do to be saved. And for me, I'm, what I'm not, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try to prove how this is wrong. All I want to do is what I like to do best is just read the Bible. I want to look at what the Bible says, and I want to compare it to to this to this idea that we just have to believe, and that's all we need to do to be saved. And also that. The things that we do, the, the actions that, that Jesus had commanded us in his word to do, that they have nothing to do with our salvation. Um, and so I know that I'm not a scholar. I'm not someone, I haven't gone to uh, Bible school. I haven't gone through the Greek and read all of the things and seen all of these things. But I do believe that there is enough in the Bible for me to be able to read and for it to be sufficient uh, to understand everything that we need. And I get this from 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. He says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to his own glory and excellence. And so God has revealed through his divine power everything that we need, everything that pertains to our daily life, whether how we interact with people, how we communicate with people, our relationship with people. But he also has given us everything that we need to know in how to be in good standing with him and how to have a relationship with him as well and how to follow and obey the commandments that he's given to us. And so what I want to do today is I just want to look at the faith that saves. Um, I just want to look at what that faith looks like in the Bible. And I want to go to, we're going to go to different areas in the Bible. And I just want us to look at the attributes of faith. I want us to kind of see what are the primary attributes of what this faith that is that saves us. And the first three that, the only three that I want to go ahead and look at is these three, is that one, the, the faith that saves must be founded in truth. It, it's, it's important. We have a high value on truth. We understand that this world is full of lies and the ruler of this world, as Andy says, is full of lies. That's, we, we know that from what God's word tells us. And so we need to understand that truth must be a number one priority to us. It, be, it should be something that we constantly look for, that we're constantly shuffling through, the, through all the lies to try to find that truth. And so we can't just take everything for face value. We need to, as, as uh, Paul said, that we need to examine the scriptures and to see whether or not these things are true. Number two is that the, the faith that saves, we, when we look at the Bible and the attributes that it has, is that it's also active and that it's practiced daily and that it, has, uh, it, ha- it results in actions in our lives and that it moves us and that it causes us to do things. And three is that it's life-changing. And that it's soul purifying, that it, that it causes a transformation in our lives. And I'll, I'll go ahead and look at different areas of the Bible to, to elaborate on those. But these are the three attributes that I wanted to kind of focus on for today. But before we even look at these, I wanted to understand something about faith. And that before we even begin is that faith isn't just, uh, faith in the Bible isn't just a mere act of, well, I believe. It isn't this, this action that has nothing else attached to it. When you look at the Bible, when we read about faith and we see the different areas that faith is mentioned, faith seems to have something much more. It seems to have substance. It seems to have value. It seems to have 
uh, a lot of depth within it, not just the simple act of, of uh, believing. And we, we can see this starting in Jude. When you go to Jude, verse 3, there's only one chapter in there. You read it, it says, Beloved, although I was eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. And so when we see this verse, we understand that faith is not just faith in the sense of belief, but it's the faith. It's something that was delivered and it was given to all the saints at the time. Likewise, you go to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. He says that there is one body and one spirit. <clears throat> just as we were called to one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And lastly, Paul says to the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, he says, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Or do you not realize that this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test? And so when we look at faith found in the Bible, we see that there's a lot, just by these three verses, we don't have to go super in depth. We can read it from these three verses that faith has a lot more depth to it than we really think it does. It is something that we can really be found in. It's faith is something that can be delivered and shared. Faith is something that we can contend for. And so there's much more to the meaning of faith. And so what I want to do is finally start to look at those three attributes. Look at the three different areas of the three different attributes of faith, which are being grounded in truth, that it's active, and likewise, that it's also life-changing and purifying. And so to begin with, we need to understand that faith must be grounded in truth. The faith that God calls us grants us salvation, but it needs, we need to understand and, and remember and focus on that the faith that he commands us that gives us salvation comes from him. This faith that, that offers us the, the chance to be with him one day in heaven so that we can glorify, glorify him forever and so that we can live in eternal joy and peace, we need to understand that though that thing comes from him. It isn't something that anyone on this earth, any man can create, anything that they can devise to, to give us that salvation. There's nothing that man can create from his own wisdom that can give us that salvation. And Paul kind of understood this, and, and Paul made it kind of very clear when he explained uh, how he was revealed uh, the faith and how he, was come, how he came to know Christ. You go to Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 through 12. He's telling the church there in Galatia, For I would, have no, I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. For I, didn't, I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through the revelation of Jesus Christ. And likewise, you, you follow Paul and the different writings that he has. He also talks to the Roman church. And he tells them in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, he says, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. And so we, we see these, these common uh, repetition that faith has to come from God. It has to come from Christ. It has to have that source. Everything needs to point back to Christ. But I really like how uh, Paul explains it a little bit uh, better right before these verses. This is in verse 17, but if you go to verses 14 through 15, a couple verses uh, before, he says, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how will they uh, to believe in him who they have not heard? And how will they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they preach? How are they to preach unless they are sent? And so when we see this verse, we see that there's, there's kind of a pattern of how this faith is transmitted. First it comes from Christ, and then, it, and then it's sent out into the world. And so now we have preachers that go out and, exp uh, and, and they, they share the word to people. And then the people hear those words and they believe it. And then there's action, which we'll go ahead and get onto in a little bit. But going to Romans chapter... Uh, when, we, when we go out into... I already went to Romans. When we go out to... Rome, uh, when we go out and preach the faith, we need to make sure there's three things that we need to make sure just from this point alone. That when we're sharing the faith, when we're sharing the gospel, when we're sharing the, 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 the opportunity of salvation, we need to make sure that everything that we're sharing points right back to Jesus and his words. And two, that we need to understand that the, the faith that we go out and share, that it can't contradict his words, that it can't go against what Jesus has said. And likewise... And I think this is the one that, that really is, is important for us to understand is that 
It can't be created. It isn't something that we can create. It isn't something that we can get out of our own minds. Uh, and we shouldn't be trying to do something that com comes off as appealing or it can come off as accepting. You look out into the world and, and there's just a lot of, uh, there's a lot of varying off of the road of, of truth. You see a lot of, there'll be, I was actually in Iowa uh, a, couple, a couple weeks ago. And in searching around the city for some churches, and I understand that there's a variety of churches, I start looking and I found a Church of Christ. I go to the website, and one of the things that shocked me the most was that they wear the badge of Church of Christ, but they're also, uh, they, they very clearly made it one of their main points that homosexuality is something that they accept there. It's something that they are open to, and it's something that they allow, and they, they don't really discriminate against. And... For me, that was kind of shocking just because you see that these people are trying to claim the name of Christ, but then they're also varying way off of truth just because I, I don't know what their motives are. If they're trying to become more appealing, if they're trying to become more accepting, if they're trying to get more people in, and that's the way that they'll do it. But we need to make sure that when we're out sharing the faith and when we're out preaching the good news, that it isn't something that is contrary, that it isn't something that we're creating just to, to please other people. We need to put a high value on faith. In John chapter 17, uh, on truth, on, in John chapter 17, verse 17, he says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And likewise, in John chapter 8, verse 31 through 32, he says, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so this moves me on to my next point. Uh, another thing that you, you find when you look at faith in the Bible, remember, we're not talking about just the mere act of believing, but the, the deeper and the, de the, the faith that has a lot more depth to it. When you look at faith in the Bible, we, we see that it's never a static faith. It's never just one time in the moment and it does nothing else. It's, it's not a one and done kind of thing. Uh, to better understand this, what I want to do is just look at a couple examples in the Bible. And the first one that I thought of was the Philippian jailer, which is the, the story that you see up here. We understand that Paul and Silas had went to Philippi to go and they were, they were in the time of prayer. And then they started um, casting out some evil spirits and the people were upset and then they threw them into jail. And so now we see them here in jail uh, singing and singing hymns to God. And then there's the earthquake. I'm just kind of giving a, run, a rundown of the story, but we understand that they had the opportunity to leave, but they didn't. And so the, the, the Philippian jailer comes to this point and he asks them, what must he do to be saved? What must he do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. But what I find surprising here is that when you look at this verse, they didn't stop there. They didn't just leave it at that and say, well, just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved and then left and then he was saved. It, it didn't stop there. They continued on and it says, and they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all, were, all who were in his house. Well, they had to do that. He didn't know who Christ was. He didn't know the words that, that he had commanded and that he had preached. And he didn't know what it was to, to know of, of Christ and the sacrifice that he did for us. And so they did what... Paul had mentioned earlier that he spoke the word to him and then they took him the same hour of the night and washed their wounds and he was baptized at once he and all of his family then he brought them up into the house and set food before them and he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God and so what I see here is I see a lot of action happening with this faith. This faith didn't just say, okay, I'm, I'm, I believe and I'm done and I'm good. This belief caused him to, to get up. It, believe, it caused him to uh, re get baptized, to go into the waters and to come up as a new person and, and to begin rejoicing and actually start living a new life. It started to uh, begin a new walk. It wasn't just... He, he stayed put, and that's where he's going to stay forever. He began a new walk. And, and so when I read this verse, and I, just, and I read the story of the Philippian jailer, I can't help but notice that the faith that, that he got that day caused him a lot of action. It caused him to do something. And so combined with his faith, he had a lot of action. And that's, that's an attribute of the faith that saves. And likewise, we, we know a lot of other people in the story that had faith that, that, that was counted to them as righteous. And one of the ones that I remember the most is the faith that Abraham had. You go to, um, actually, I don't know if I put it in here. You go to Hebrews chapter 11. 
Hebrews chapter 11 in your Bibles. I didn't get it up there. But you go to verse, uh, starting in verse 17. Hebrews chapter 11, starting in verse 17. I'll go ahead and read there, and then we'll go ahead and just kind of see what kind of faith Abraham had. He says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was even able to raise him from the dead, from which, figurative figurative speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. And by faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed all of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. And by faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. And so when you see the different kind of faith, the, all of these people by faith did something. They all had an action that followed their faith. And what I wanted to focus on was Abraham. Abraham, even though he needed to offer up his son, you see there that he believed that God was going to bring his son back. He had the faith that, that God was going to bring his, his son back from the dead. And so that caused him to follow through. That caused him to go out and to, and to offer up his son. And thankfully, God was able to stop him in that time and find a replacement, find the perfect lamb in that moment, just like he does now. To, to, to fill in the place for his son so that we don't have to go through that sacrifice. And the amazing thing is that it, it's almost a mirror of what we do today. You know, God, God in his perfect power and his full love gave us a sacrifice so that we don't have to. And he gave us a sacrifice so that, that we can in faith know that we have an opportunity, that God is going to be uh, in control and that he's going to save us and that he's going to get us through and take us into heaven where he's prepared uh, mansions for us. And so when we see the faith that, that Abraham had, we need to have the same kind of faith. We need to examine the faith that we have in our lives or the faith that we're preaching, that it's full of action. Uh, I think about other people in the story as well. It's the same about Moses going through the Red Sea. I can't even imagine just how scary and how intimidating those waves uh, in that ocean would have been if I was standing there. But Moses said, I need to take my people through here. And by faith, he walked through there. You think about Noah, and Noah was commanded to build an ark. And even though this is some grand task and it's something that I don't understand how any of us would be able to do with the equipment that they had then, by faith, Noah created that ark. He went and did, and did what God had asked him. And through that ark, he was saved. Um, and so all of this to say is that a lot of the belief in God will always produce action. It will always have intentional decisions to do what God asks us to do. And so we see here that faith has action. But likewise, faith needs to be practiced daily. It isn't one action, but it's constant actions. It's continually living for God, and it's continually following his commandments and doing the things that he's asked us. In James chapter 2, verses 14 through, 20, 14 through 24, he says, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things that they need for the body, what good is that? And that's the same thing with our lives. I, I remember one time Carrie gave me this explanation, and it's been stuck in my head, that somebody that truly, they, it was an example of a person that truly believed that he was in a building full of fire, that he was truly in a, a, a building surrounded by fire, uh, fire engulfed and, and ready to be burned down, but he was stagnant. He wasn't moving. He wasn't running away. He wasn't in fear. And so the question is, well, is this belief, is this what he's believing really real? And you see the kind of same language here. It's like if you really want something, uh, if you see these people in hunger, you see these people in need, but you say go out and, and be good and, and, and hopefully you're, you're better without doing something about it, well, then there's no good to that. And so the faith that, that we have needs to follow this format, that it needs to have action with it and uh, continual action. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, um, oh, we'll go ahead and continue. Well, we can skip by this, but Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, he says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, and whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, 
if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And the way that Paul is telling the people there in Philippi, in Philippi it's not uh, think about it once and then you're good. It's a constant thinking about it. It's a constant uh, meditation on it. Constantly take the time to devote time to these honorable and pure things. Likewise, in, in Paul telling Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 11 through 16, he says, Command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to public reading of scriptures, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect, neglect, neglect the gift that you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourselves and on the teaching. Persist in this. For by doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And so the language that you see here is a continual thing. You think about somebody that's trying to practice to be some, good at a sport. You think of somebody, I, the other day I was messing around with a piano and I've never really set the time to, to learn in, so I only know a couple things. But when you really set your, your mind and you the time to practice and to immerse yourself and to devote time to things, that's where you'll see growth. That's where you'll see change. That's where you'll see maturity. And that's the same mentality with our faith. The same thing with, with going out and, and having our daily reading and, and going out and praying constantly and, and learning and, and, and practicing evangelism and doing all of these things. This is what the faith looks like. This is the faith that we try to be found in looks like. Constantly acting, constantly grow, going, constantly moving. We are, we are not static, but very moving all the time. And so when I see... Uh, the idea that faith is a one and done and it's very static where people just say, I believe in God, but don't act and live in a way that they do believe in God. Well, then we need to make sure that we're examining the scriptures to see if these things are true, if these things are right. And so uh, the faith that saves is always going to be full of action and full of practice our whole life, not just when we're saved. And lastly, what I want to look at is just the faith that saves is transformative. It's purifying. It's, it's soul changing and, and it can, and it's supposed to cause change in us the same way that we say that the faith causes action, but at the same time, at the same time, it also causes a lot of change in our lives. Um, you go to Luke chapter nine, verse 23, and he says, and he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Likewise, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, he says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that, the testing, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable. Part of our daily walk with God is understanding that we need to constantly grow. And when you see there in Luke, when he says to take up your cross daily, you, we have to understand that that cross was where Jesus died. And when he asks us, to take up that cross daily. That means we are constantly taking that cross, taking that opportunity to die to our sins, to die to the things that, that are not of God, and to constantly come up new and to renew our lives and to live a transformed life. Uh, I love reading this verse because this is something that we need to constantly remind ourselves that we need to keep an eye on our lives so that we don't be conformed to this world. It's easy to fit in. It's easy to do all the things that everyone else is doing. It's easy to just say, I believe because they believe. We need to constantly, in our, with the faith that God has commanded in the Bible, be renewing ourselves, purifying ourselves, growing in maturity. Every day is an opportunity, not just on Sunday, not just on Easter, not just on Christmas, but every day is an opportunity. He says, take up the cross daily. I think about uh, Saul when he, when he changed his life on the road to Damascus, when his life was changed on the road to Damascus, he no longer was even Saul anymore. His name was Paul, and he went from persecuting the church to going out and preaching the news of the church, going out and spreading the church. And so the faith that he had there caused a change in him. And I think that's where I want to go ahead and end today. I wanted us to, to look at faith in the Bible, look at how it was ex uh, explained in the Bible, and to really understand that the faith that we 
need to contend for, the faith that we want to be found in, that we're constantly trying to be found in, one needs to always be founded in truth. Always seek truth. Always uh, read the scriptures and read his word and listen to God's voice to figure out what truth is. Two, that we need to always uh, have action with our faith. That if there is no action without our faith, our faith is stagnant. It's dead. It's not working. It's not moving. And so there needs to be action that follows our faith. And it's not just one action, but a daily action. And lastly, that are the faith that we have changes us. We shouldn't be the same that we were when we started. When we're in, uh, in our Christian lives, we need to constantly be aiming for maturity, constantly growing into perfection. We're never going to be perfect. Jesus calls us perfect, but that doesn't mean that we are perfect. It means that we are growing and that we are growing into it, that we are constantly striving and moving closer and closer to be more and more like Christ. And so look at the reflection that you're giving off. Is it something that is that is looking more and more like Christ. And if it isn't, then that means that we need to look at our faith. We need to look at our motives. We need to look at our, our, our daily actions and see, is this the faith that God has commanded us? And so if that's something that you're dealing with, if that's something that you have been struggling with, then I really encourage you to, to come to any one of us. You don't have to come up to the front right now and come to me. You can come to anyone you feel comfortable with and tell them, hey, I need help. I have not been growing. My faith, I don't even know where it's grounded. I don't have a solid ground to know what it is that I believe in. I don't do anything that in regards to my faith, or I am the same way as when I started. These are things that we can help you out with. These are things that we can encourage you with, and that's the point of all of us here. All of us are at different points of our lives, different points of our walk, and we can encourage one another to continue going, to grow, and to show to go out into this world and show off Christ the way that he asks us to. And so if there's anything that you need, any requests, any prayer requests, then this is going to be an opportunity so that you can go ahead and do that while we sing this song of encouragement.